America and an all too familiar side behind me is in Australian Holden Ute and this is driven by Josh Robinson all the way from Australia also and uh, he's floating around so we're going to go and ask him about this beast of a car, 1000 odd horsepower supercharged V8. What's going on? I'm Josh Robinson, Formula Drift driver from Australia, out here at SEMA 2019 with my Holden Ute. So in 2016, I had the opportunity to come over to America and compete professionally in Formula Drift. So I bought this chassis for 500 Australian dollars or about 300 US dollars from a wrecking yard back home. And we started to build it. The only issue is that no one has carbon fiber panels for these. So things like the carbon fiber doors and body, we all had to take molds for those and make it from the ground up. We have the Maverick Man carbon fiber hood. It's a bonnet, mate. <laughs> it depends on which part of the world you're from. So, Magnuson supercharged LS3 engine, Wiseco pistons, Texas Speed dual engine, the AZMF billet CNC aluminium 7075 knuckles down the bottom there. So, inside we have a PPG gearbox, Axetti clutch, OMP steering wheel, Link ECU. Willwood brakes and pedal assembly and a carbon fiber dash from a V8 supercar. And uh, you've taken good care of that carbon fiber bodywork. Yeah, that's right. So we're blowing out some necks and tires here this weekend with Hoonigan having a whole bunch of fun at SEMA. You see we've got the Cosmos wheels down there. In the back, it's a Mishimoto cooling system mated to a uh, radium fuel cell down there, dry sump system up in the corner, VC racing coilovers, Duralast sensors and pads and a full titanium exhaust. So being a drift car, I mean, most of the time the cooling system's up the front of most cars, why do you move to the back and how do you keep it cool considering you've not gotten a huge amount of airflow? So with the Mishimoto cooling system, we run two uh, enormous fans at the back. So that ensures we have good airflow. The other thing is with a uh, pro drift car, they really only run for about 20 seconds at full noise. So we don't see temperatures over boiling point or 100 degrees Celsius. Uh, at, at all really. We start the run at around 77 degrees. By the end of the first run, it's about 95. We have two minutes before our second run. So it cools back to about 88. And then after the second run, we're maybe at 98 to 100 degrees. So it's never really an issue. So is it a damage thing? Cause you don't want to trash it when you hit things? Uh, no, it's more about weight distribution. So that's why we put the fuel cell, the heat exchanger for the Magnuson supercharger and the radiator for the engine in the back, just to try and get as much weight as we can in the back end of the car. It's definitely a, a nice luxury to be able to run up to the car and jump starter, check fuel, check fans, check the cooling system. It's super easy to work on. It's one of the very nice things about this. So we run BC Racing coilovers, AZMF made the front knuckles for us, and FIGS Engineering made the rear arms for us. Where's the rest of your car, mate? <laughs> uh, it's been evenly dispersed across Las Vegas. Just want to make sure that everyone gets their fair share. So, so here's a quick overview of my Formula Drift Holden Ute. I won't bore you guys too much more with the details. Let's end it.
everybody. Now let's give it up. Best of show. Trips Man, maybe you can use that for uh, 